afternoon. I'm your host, Amal Hawkins, and welcome to the 11th episode of The Fourth Side, presented by UVA Community Credit Union and powered by Keswe. It's Black Friday. That means it's one day following Thanksgiving. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm still full from eating all the Thanksgiving meals from, yeah, I said meals, plural, so because you go to more than one house. If you know, like I know, you got to visit more than one household on Thanksgiving. Also, if you are a Washington football fan, I guess you had fun yesterday. The Cowboys uh, just let you guys beat them. So thank them for an early Christmas gift. Uh, but speaking of Thanksgiving, I ate a lot of sweet potato pie. Uh, I love macaroni and cheese. I know a lot of folks like pumpkin pie, but I can never turn my back on that sweet potato pie that my big mama used to make. And then my dad's mom, who we call Ma, she would make pound cake. You know, both of them had transitioned on, but we still make those dishes in their honor. So I'm fighting through it now. You got to fight through the itis from the from eating all that turkey and the, and the good stuffing. Do y'all call it stuffing or dressing? Let me know in the chat if you call it stuffing or dressing, because that's a big debate. Like pumpkin, sweet potato pie, now it's dressing versus stuffing. So let me know in the chat what y'all think on Facebook. On Twitter, stuffing comes out of the bird. Okay, see, producer, hey, they they missed me from last week because they already firing shots right now. So I'm I'm not gonna keep talking about Thanksgiving because I'm gonna just probably stop talking and go eat and let the guests do what they do because this is what they do. So we got a we got special guests for y'all today, man. Thanksgiving is a time to spend with some some time with family. So we thought it was appropriate to bring some family to the fourth side. Cause you know, Bronco and the staff, their motto is family first, last, always fourth side. It's about you guys. You guys are family. I know we can't go to games like we want to, but that's why we started the show. So how can I transition these two gentlemen in, man? You know, a lot of people can't tell who they are apart, you know, shout out to, Robbie Williamson, he says, beat FSU most definitely. Oh, look at that, right on cue. It's like they knew how I wanted to transition because these two guys was a part of a team that stopped that streak that FSU had. Their numbers was, was it two? It was two digits apart while they were here. Um, some say they are, are identical. Ironically enough, both of these guys played with the same NFL team, and we got them to come here at the same time. I wonder if we could get the producers to bring up both of our guests. Can y'all tell which one they are without looking at their names? Can y'all tell? <laughs> we got the great Rondé and Tiki Barber joining the show. How you how you fellas doing today? Good. I'm fantastic, Ahmad. How are you, man? Happy I'm Thanksgiving. great, man. Happy this Thanksgiving to both of you. Happy, th- happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Yeah, man. So, Rondé, being that you're the oldest, I see you You spoke first, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just defer to him. You know, I kind of have to do Ahmad. that, Ahmad. I have yeah, to do that defer. every now and then. I don't really want are- to because I, I talk better than he does. I do it for a living Ooh. every day. But, you know, I just felt like I'd be respectful because it's Thanksgiving. Wow. Well, how about mm. that? You know what, Ahmad? Tiki and I have been on a couple of chats lately, and everybody wants to say, Tiki and Rondé. But in reality, I was born first. Thank you yes. for that. It should that be Rondé and Tiki. I don't get it. I just it's because I, I kicked you out. I kicked you out. Oh, man. <laughs> get out of my house. I'm going to call Geraldine on that one. <laughs> Would you, uh, what, what, how, how, you like seven minutes older? Seven minutes, man. That's significant. Seven. That is a significant. That's a lot, that's a lot of time. Brother. People well, almost run her. two miles in seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> nice for, for her, that's a good point. seven minutes <laughs> so man i'm glad you guys joined the show you know both you guys are all ac performers both of you guys were pro bowlers in the nfl uh i'm gonna start with ronde again since he's the oldest uh um, disrespect man <laughs> <laughs> you gotta give me one of them trophies for me to let you go first that's behind you <laughs> they, they, those are nice i give you oh, did you mute this. what'd you say ronde I said, I can go grab my Super Bowl ring if you want to. He has oh, a runner-up up. ring. Come on now. Be quiet. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, oh, a, this is abuse. This is, a, this is what is. I have to deal with. So this, this is what it was. He since... doesn't usually pull that card, but sometimes he does when he tries to, like, big ball it every now and then because he won a Super Bowl and I didn't. But it's all good. I win at least. 
Can't take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to Tiki, Tiki, can I, can I ask you a question? I always wanted to ask you this. What's up? You know, they got the sand and football like high and tight. Did you create that? Because you were the first guy that I see that was holding the ball up high and tight. Can you make money off that? I wish. You know, it's funny because there was a coach. <laughs> Uh, who was I? I can't remember his name now, but he was at a rival. He was at North Carolina. He mm-hmm. sent me a note and he's like, you know, we teach the Tiki method down here. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, I, sh- I should have patented it when I had this shot. But you remember this, Amar, when you were a kid, yep. they taught you to hold the ball across your chest, right? When mm-hmm. you go into contact, keep it like perpend- uh, perpendicular to the ground, no, parallel to the ground and just yeah. lock it in like this. But the problem is when there's an actual football there, it's exposed. It's exposed mm. on the top and it's open on the bottom. And so the ball can get knocked out. And so what my coach did, this was my running back coach with the Giants. Um, uh, his name was Gerald Ingram. He uh-huh. said, it's actually better if you hold it vertical. So hold the ball vertical, right? Make sure mm-hmm. your elbow is always against your side, especially when you're going into contact. And then when you, when you feel somebody coming to tackle you, take your off ball hand, wrap mm-hmm. it around your wrist and go to the ground like this, no matter what. Like, so as soon as you feel contact, do this, right? And if you come through it, great. Then you, then you can start running again. But as soon as you feel yeah. contact, go to the ground like this. I know you were talking about the Washington football team and the Dallas Cowboys last night, right? Did mm-hmm. you, see, you saw Zeke's fumble, which is his fifth yes. lost fumble of the season. You saw You see what he was doing when he went to go into the ground? He had yep. the ball way out here trying to get mm-hmm. an extra half a yard for no damn reason, right? <laughs> so he's getting an extra half a yard. The ball comes out, and he fumbles. When you, when you feel contact – Ball high and tight like this. Go to the mm. ground. like It hurts because you're going to fall awkwardly, right? But go to the ground like this. You will never fumble. 80% of fumbles, Ahmad, happen uh-huh. when you're reaching for an extra yard, right? Because the ball's now really exposed. It's away from your body. Unless uh-huh. you have Walter Payton hands. He had monster hands. Unless you have Walter <laughs> Payton hands, that ball is, is vulnerable, and you're going to fumble it. So it was, it was just physics. It was like it was technique and <laughs> physics. And so I figured it out, but – I, I didn't patent it. I should have, though. Yeah, you should have patented that, Tiki, Devin. Rondé, how did you carry the ball, all your interceptions? Did you high and tight, or you just let it – you nah, just he ran? Was, he was lazy. <laughs> I was doing whatever I want. It's funny you say that, though, because uh, my last year in the NFL is the year I transitioned to safety. I played one year at safety in the mm-hmm. NFL. And Greg Schiano, he was 100%. If you're carrying the football, it was Tiki method. And he told me, it's like, I want you to, if you, if you have the ball in your hand, carry it like Tiki. Mm-hmm. So you carry it like this. So we're playing the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, uh, uh, they, they, they run a pass for another, they throw a pass for another guy. It's a, like a, it's a crazy uh, play at the, bottom of the, at the bottom of the ball. It pops up and I catch it. I catch it, right? And Uh-oh. I got like a 60 yards to the end zone, right? And so I take off, right? And I mm-hmm. go like this. And I put it like this. And I am running so damn slow <laughs> I'm like I can't get to the end zone like this so at the end of it you know I kind of it just turns into a one-handed you know deal yeah. but it was because of because of Tiki like there's so many people that have told me that that's the only way that they teach to carry the football wow. is, is this way but you know when you're trying to floss and trying to be cool try to run you know, fast trying to run yeah. fast you know you but want see, that ball like this see, but you want it like this Ronda, Ronda, you're wrong though I mean, it's just the problem the reason you, you were <laughs> of course slow. i'm wrong if, 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 no the Tiki, reason Tiki you were says slow. i'm wrong i'm wrong all right look you know you know and i mean i hate to get geeky but i'm a geek at the end of the day i'm, I'm a geek. so in order to run fast it's three things you know this because okay. you ran track right mm-hmm. it's strength like how strong you are it's mm-hmm. stride length or mm-hmm. stride frequency and or stride frequency right so how fast yeah. can you turn over mm-hmm. so you can't run with different arm strides and leg strides they have to be the same you know what i mean mm-hmm. like it's, it's just physically you're gonna if you have a short arm stride you're gonna have short feet strides right so you, have, you have long arm strides, you're going to have long leg strides. The problem is that when you have long leg strides, you're putting on the brakes every single time. Every single time mm. you step forward with a long stride, you're hitting the brakes. It's like brake, brake, brake. <laughs> but when you're short, and so when your arms are tucked in right here, you're taking short, faster strides, you're accelerating. Mm-hmm. So in actuality, when you run like that, you know, tight like this, and, you're, and you're, your leg turnover is faster, you're actually running faster. And so... <laughs> I got faster when I ran like that. I have no idea Ooh. why you got slower. 
maybe because you were like 36 years old at that point. Uh, Ahmad, Ahmad, he just he just took us in the straight geek mode. He, like I don't, he, I don't hey, have any he idea broke it down. You need to go with Michael Johnson and them to get guys ready for the 40, man. I mean, you broke it down to a science. So oh, I got, you know, let's transition. Let's talk about the time you had at UVA, and we'll be naive and. You know, we're just going to get right to it. We play in Florida State. We know what mm-hmm. you guys did in 95 versus Florida State. Uh, Ward Dunn being a top flight back. But we had a guy named Tiki Barber as well as playing running back. And, I, and you talk about you talk being about- a geek. I'm saying that with air quotations because I, I would never call you a geek. No, did no you I, ever, I, I accept it. I accept did it. You ever, did so. you like say it upon yourself like, I'm going to show people I'm better than him or was it just about just, – you know, beating Florida State and breaking yeah, that streak? Or did you I even think you, about the streak? It wasn't even about work at that point. And, yeah, we mm-hmm. talked about the streak. But we walked into this game. And you see the crowd that's right there. It was like yeah. that when we walked in. I'm talking about three hours before the game. The crowd was <laughs> insane. It was, I mean, the students were there. And the energy was just heightened. And so every effort we made was just, it was above and beyond. And I'm t- talking about from, you know, this big run that we had from the, mm-hmm. the defensive efforts. Percy had that dive-in interception. Will Bryce punted those dudes into the end zone. Uh, every single every single possession. It was, you know, it was it's kind of just ordained. I think it was just meant to happen. <laughs> um, you know, I, I can't, I, it was one of the greatest days of my life as an as an athlete and we but i shared it with so many other amazing guys me and brian owen brian owen was a walk-on mm-hmm. man and he ended yep. up playing significant minutes caught the first pass in this game p allen and who just, he bought out all all year long in the peach bowl this the following at the end of the year i mean he took the kickoff back for a touchdown against georgia that, that sealed it and we just had mm-hmm. great players on this team great college players on this team and Rondé, how can you can you speak to going against guys like Andre Cooper on offense and and Canel at quarterback and the firepower they had? Oh, for sure. So, like, obviously, the only play that mattered was that play. That one. The day. <laughs> you know, Adrian Burnham, who who came into the game. People don't remember this. Paul London started that game. He got mm. hurt in uh, somewhere in the fourth quarter, and Adrian had to come on and make that play. And it was wow. a spectacular play. A lot of people give. You know Anthony Poindexter credit for it, but really that was a, a, a red, <laughs> like a freshman that came in AB and knocked that ball loose for a for from from Warwick Dunn at the goal line. But we came into that game and obviously they you know Warwick Dunn, you know Cooper, mm-hmm. you know Danny Cannell was a quarterback. They were supposed to be in the national championship conversation. You know from mm-hmm. a defensive perspective, I was telling somebody this the other day. You know it was who was going to make the last play. You know, because we, you know, I'm, I don't know if you know your Virginia history, but in 1995, we lost yep. on the last play to Texas. We lost on the last yep. play to Michigan week one. Mm-hmm. That was your you know, fault, we, by the way. Hush. Who and caught that? Mercury then, Haynes? Was, was no, Mer- no, Mercury nobody Haynes asked him? you. Nobody <laughs> asked you who got beat on that last play. Okay. Oh, I didn't even know he really got beat. I thought he was joking. <laughs> No, it was right. I'm leaving. I'm going to leave. DBs, we forget, though. We forget, Rondé. We forget. Like, I forget. I'm on. Go watch the last (laughs) couple of plays. The first one was a slant. So, and and it was incomplete. You know, drives back, comes back. Same formation, same basic basic play. Rondé's jumping the slant. He's like, dude, I'm going to the house the other way. He put his foot into the ground, back in the end zone. And we. Hey, come why, on. Why do you got why you got to put that back on me, man? I let that go until just now. I let it go until just now. <laughs> because you uh, brought up your Super Bowl. That's I why. I know. Mm. I know. We had, and, and then in North Carolina. So, you know, we had played a bunch of close games and and from a defensive perspective, it was who was going to make the last play, right? It was it didn't matter who it was. And it happened to be AB, you know, on that direct snap to to Ward. Yeah. Gun. Uh, you know, it, we were all we all kind of felt like there was going to be a direct snap. You know, last play of the game, it, they didn't have a chance to run two plays. It was only one play, and mm-hmm. they're going to give it to their best player. And uh, I remember Todd White screaming at the line at the line of scrimmage right before the snap. It's a direct snap. It's a direct snap. Wow. And everybody was started running toward you know Warwick, and you know we, we you know the ref got it right because it, it looks like a touchdown, but mm-hmm. if you if you uh, slow mo replay. Adrian knocked the ball out. The ball is short of the goal line. He, he repossesses it short of the goal line. No touchdown. It was, it was just a great play. Um, it was so it, and, 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 and uh, that, that day, if you're asking me, 
I knew Cooper was gonna double move me all day because I was I was kind of aggressive. I you know I led the league in inter- you know, the nation interceptions the year before or whatever. The nation, the nation interception. Every play was a double move. I felt like every what? play was a double move because they knew I wanted to jump every. <laughs> so I you know I had a good play, a couple good plays early in the game. The rest of the game it was like double move, double move, uh-huh. <laughs> double move. <laughs> But they were. It was. It was a battle. I mean, I you know, I, I I joke with Tiki a lot, but you know, his three hundred and eleven all-purpose mm-hmm. yards. That was. That was. Oh, that he was got to correct good. Tiki on the dot. That was he did. pretty. He got on the dot. One ninety three rushing. That's a great. That's a great yards. brother right there. Because I, I, I mean, the way you've been talking about him. I've said it so many times. I've said it so many times. He kissed. Oh, it's ingrained. In <laughs> well, you know, talk about you know you guys' career. We'll, we'll flip it back to Tiki. Just read your accolades, man. ACC Player of the Year, your senior year. You rushed for thirty three hundred yards, and then the guy by the name of Thomas Jones, who yeah. I played with, came in and and broke that unfortunately. And uh, that's my boy. Second round, I know. Yeah, that, you taught him everything. You know, second round pick on the New York Giants. Played with them from ninety seven to two thousand six, and then you're in the Giants Ring of Honor member and a three time Pro Bowler. Mm-hmm. How was that like playing um, in New York? New York was insane. Look at that. But it was nothing it was nothing like playing at K Spring High School, that video they were showing right now. <laughs> um, but this is actually probably my favorite game, the Texas game. You know, the year I was after there. we lost at Texas. Yeah, you remember they came and they all they said the year before was how big the holes were cuz um mm. Ricky Williams and Priest Holmes, they both rushed yep. for 100 yards and I mean, not to get vulgar, but I, we got in their ass when they came up to Charlottesville. <laughs> And I scored three touchdowns <laughs> in the first quarter. I mean, it was that was probably my favorite game. The, the Florida State one was the most important one, but the mm-hmm. Texas one because it was a revenge game was probably my favorite one. Um, Look at them uh, you know, playing in New York. Playing in New York was crazy. It was awesome. It was intense. The, the fans are just they're so knowledgeable. So if you're doing well, they're gonna let you know about it. If you're doing poorly. They're going to also let you know about it. Like you don't <laughs> yeah. get the benefit of the doubt in New York. <laughs> and so, um, you know, you, you take the good and the bad. But I, I think uh, because I lived in New York City and I saw tons of opportunity outside of the game, I got into media really early. And it's uh, and it's what I'm doing now. Obviously, I have a radio show on CBS and um, I enjoy it. And mm-hmm. it's all because of the success that I had in, in New York. And. You know, people always ask, you know, what advice do you give young players uh, that get into the NFL? And I always tell them it is it is a platform that has raised your ceiling, uh, you know, mm. uh, raised your floor. I should say your ceiling is limitless, but it raises your floor. Once you make it to the league, you're 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 somewhere where you weren't, you know, five minutes ago once you get drafted. And from what you do from there, it's all up to you. Opportunities are going to be plentiful. It's just you got to take advantage of them. And New York and, provided me a lot of those. Well, what you said was correct, but I think everybody's going to listen to Michael Jordan. He said the ceiling is the roof. So, yeah. You know, <laughs> the ceiling <laughs> is the roof, I think. <laughs> and and Rondé will appreciate this segue to him. He said we saved the best for last. So, we'll talk about Rondé's career at UVA. ACC rookie and freshman of the year, 1994. 15 interceptions over UVA career. Third round pick of the Bucks, entire career in Tampa Bay from ninety seven to two thousand and twelve. I I stopped playing arena football that same year, Rondé. That's why we connect, man. I retired uh-huh. the same year. Super Bowl champion, five time Pro Bowler, five time All Pro, and also in the Ring of Honor down there in Tampa. So my career, this play right here, defined my career. It's Clemson. This Clemson play. Um, uh-huh. Pick that thing off and and, and turn it back. And Rafael Garcia, we we beat Clemson for the first time, and who knows how long. But my my career was defined by you know slow starts. I was redshirted as a freshman uh, mm-hmm. in Virginia, uh, didn't play until my second year, and then turned into a great player at Virginia. It, it correlated very uh, similarly to my NFL career. I yep. uh, got drafted in the third round, didn't play but two games my f- rookie year. And then for 15 years, I didn't miss a game. And I played against a lot of guys. I intercepted Aaron Brooks, our guy, six times, <laughs> three times, <laughs> twice, you know, <laughs> when he was in New Orleans. And, and I had a bunch of game defining plays. But for me, it was about dealing with adversity um, early. And once I dealt with that adversity, whether it was at Virginia, just, you know, not. 
ready to play. Um, mm -hmm. it, it motivated me to get to where I was uh, eventually. And I, I played with that huge chip on my shoulder. I wasn't supposed to be where I, was, where I, where I ended up, um, mm -hmm. but I was, I was so willing to prove that I was good enough to be there. It, it, it drove me through my entire career. And then, you know, obviously 15, 16 years later in the NFL, um, you know, I'd had five Pro Bowls, you know, three All Pros, two second team All Pros, won a Super Bowl. And one of the you know, one of the best players in Bucks history, and um, it, it came from humble beginnings, and that literally is how I define myself. You know, you can be humble, you can be you know not who you're supposed to be, and then achieve in spite of that. And uh, I, when I talk to young people, that's what I tell them. I was like, you, know, I, you don't have to be the biggest, you don't have to be the fastest, you don't have to be a first round draft pick. You know, you just got to be able to overcome your own adversity and turn yourself into who you want to be and you in 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 and look at me and that's that's essentially what i became it didn't it didn't hurt obviously that you know i had a, a twin brother that you know was the king of new york for for a long time that, <laughs> that, that gave me some recognition uh but at the end of the day it was what i did what i put on tape every single day and i i was, I, I wouldn't trade it in for anything it was it was perfect yeah. for me yeah, Rhonda, you definitely sound like you're still pissed off for greatness. Oh, yeah. trust me. Yeah. Trust it's, you still trust got that chip. Uh, James oh, Watson on Facebook said he loves seeing three UVA legends on the fourth side. You know what, James? Thank you for including me Thank with you. these yeah, great legends. Yes. Uh, That's cool, man. These guys are the legends right here. I'm just man, an old head. We're just old heads. That's all it is. Oh, man. <laughs> no, Rhonda is not accepting that. <laughs> I'm trying to be young. I, I look youngish. I pull all there the gray out of my beard. I pull all the gray out of my beard every week. So I don't, See, that's oh, why you don't use up. just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. My beard is like seriously gray. I'm not. I'm not like Lovey Smith of the of Illinois gray yet. But I. But I got some gray. So we still. So fans, if you want to interact with the Barber Brothers, make sure you use Facebook and also Twitter. We are definitely gonna be here. We're gonna have a, a Forsyth fanatic join in, so she can. Ask the Barber brothers some questions because I'm just I'm just enjoying it. Anytime I get a chance to talk to either one of them, I definitely enjoy it. So, you know, we talk, talked about your NFL career, how both you guys in the ring are on. I, I think that's special. You know, two brothers uh, went to the same college. You guys left the same – you left the same year, right, because mm -hmm. you left yep. early because your brother was a senior. That was yep. awesome. And yeah. to play on the same team, that's rare now. You yeah. guys up there like with the Kobe Bryans, like – it's rare to see <laughs> one player play as many years as you did on one team. Can you discuss like how you guys feel about just knowing that one yeah. organization is is all that you represent? Yeah, I mean, Rondé did 16 years. I remember calling him 12 years in, and I was like, "How in the world are you still doing this?" And he was <laughs> like, "It's it's it's neck up because physically it's not the same, but it's it's head up." <laughs> Uh, I'm smart. That's, that's the only reason I can still do it. But for me, I, I mean, I, I took a physical beating uh, mm -hmm. for a decade in New York. But the reason that I was always one, I never wanted to go anywhere else. I mean, very early, I realized how special New York was. And it's interesting because I hated New York when I first got there because it was so busy. Right. You say hello to somebody, you catch somebody's eye, you know, you're walking down the street like, hey, what's up? And they look at you like, do I know you? You know, so it was <laughs> it was odd coming from Southwest Virginia, going into you know going into a city like New York, and I lived in the city, um, but I I found real quickly that there were so many like interesting stories and people and opportunity that even when I became a free agent after two thousand, mm -hmm. that was the year that we went to the Super Bowl. Um, I mean, not that I gave them the home ca hometown discount, but I'd never really like pursued going anywhere else. It's like, just mm -hmm. get me a fair deal. I, I want to be here. I want to be in New York. And and the family, the Mara family and the Tish family, the two owners of the team made it worth it because they were they're so such special people and uh, such special families that it felt like I was part of it. And uh, I never wanted to go anywhere else because I know how hard it is to go. Yeah reestablish yourself somewhere else. I always say this to my radio uh, partner, BT, um, when he's talking about free agency and moving around. I'm like, don't forget, BT, nobody loves you like your mama, right? The team that drafted <laughs> you, right? That, yeah. They'll love you first, and the fans don't love you first. If you go someplace else, it gets a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Rondé? I was a free agent for the first time in 2000, and before the 2001 season. And mm -hmm. ironically, my defensive back coach, Herm Edwards, left that year to go to um, 
uh, the Jets as a head coach. And the guy that replaced him uh, was this unknown dude that played at William & Mary, who we played against, and I don't remember playing against him. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, he played wide receiver. Uh, yep. He was my defensive back coach. It was Mike Tomlin. And I remember going up to dinner with Mike, me and Kia, his wife, and my wife, Claudia. We went to dinner one night um, before, as I was a free agent. And he said, yo, I'm looking at the film. I'm studying you. And nobody that we have or that we can get can do what you do for this defense. And, like, you can't, basically said you can't leave. You know, and I explored mm. elsewhere. I looked at Cincinnati. Mm. Seattle gave me an offer or whatever. Uh, but at the end of the day, I came back. And that, that year, 2001, my first year with Mike Tomlin, this is the year I led the NFL in interceptions. Yep. I had 10 interceptions, most ever in the modern era. You know, it hasn't been matched yet, whatever. It was like my career year, and I had signed actually an undermarket deal. That's that's beside the point. That's another chip on my shoulder. <laughs> but um, but but, it, it, but at that point, I realized I'm never leaving here. Like, I don't care what it takes. I'm never leaving Tampa. Tampa, mm. it, it, we, we, he put it very succinctly. He's like, Rhonda, you have so much invested. Forget about the regular bank account. You have so much invested in the emotional bank account with this football team. Mm-hmm. It, it, it behooves you to finish your career here. Like, it doesn't matter what it takes. Find a way to finish your career here. And Bruce Allen came in after Rich McKay left to go to uh, Atlanta. Um, and he, he signed me to a long-term deal when I was 31 years old. I was 31 mm-hmm. years old. Hadn't made a whole bunch of money. I'd made some money. Hadn't made a whole bunch of money. And he signed me to a long-term deal uh, when I was 31 years old. And it was at that point, it was like, I'm finishing my career here. I'll never leave. And... You know, it, it's, it's hard to happen now. There's not that kind of loyalty in the NFL. Uh, the yeah. economies of it you know, just don't make it possible. Um, but I, I was lucky. You know, we, we, we had some great players here, and a bunch of them had left before their careers were done. And, and I fit right into that slot where, they, where our owners were like, and our GM was like, we're not letting this guy go. He has to be a buck his entire career. And it's, it, it was timing, of course, but, you know, I, I, I had a lot invested into this community and this football team, uh, and it's why I'm still here. It's, it's, a, it's, a, great, it's a great place. Um, I know how rare it is, but I, yeah. I, I embrace it, you know. Definitely. And now I want to intro our fourth side fanatic, Patty Karuba, to join us, who works with Virginia football and the community engagement with the UVA Children's Hospital. How you doing, Patty? Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you. I've learned a lot about football today. So thank hey. you for that. What's With up, these Patty? two uh, gentlemen, this is what they do. Hi. <laughs> I um, have worked at the Children's Hospital at UVA for 23 years. And one of the most wonderful things that we have going on every year, except for this one, is when the football players come on the Friday before the game, before the home yeah. game and visit with the inpatient children and the outpatient children. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just amazing to see the energy and the excitement and they pass out um, posters and swag and and the kids just love it. Mm -hmm. But um, we miss them this year and hopefully next year we'll be able to do that again. And I want to send a shout out to Charles Snowden because he comes every single time and the players are so happy to be there. I always say, you know, thank you so much. And, and they say, Oh, it's our honor. We're really happy to be here. So, you know, it's, um, it's a wonderful thing that they do. And I don't think many people even know that they do this. They come mm-hmm. and visit with the children, and they hold babies and comfort little children, and it's really a lovely um, thing that happens. And I'm honored to be a witness to that. Definitely, I know you know Rhonda and Tiki, uh, being representatives of the NFL, they've you know visited a lot of children hospitals. If I could get just mm-hmm. both of them to share their thoughts on how those visits oh, yeah. were and what they meant I rem- to them. I rem- yeah, I remember doing that when we were at UVA. I mean, it's 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 one of those moments that um, because you don't think about the influence that you have on somebody until mm-hmm. you until until it happens, and then you hear the the stories down the line, and um, a kid will remember it for years. And uh, doing that at UVA actually set me up for 
I think a lifetime of of giving back to my community. And, and when I came to New York, I joined a couple of uh, uh, boards. One was the Fresh Air Fund, which got kids from Brooklyn and the Bronx and the mm -hmm. concrete jungle of New York out into uh, you know rural places where they could you know dream a little bit. And you know Robin Hood Foundation, which fights poverty in, in here in New York City. And so it all started with a very early introduction to to service and and giving back and using this unbelievable power that we as athletes have of influence to mm -hmm. make changes and, 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 and uplift people. Yeah, it, it really does make a difference in a child's life. And yeah, I, you just, you just it makes an impact. I, I would say on top of that, Patty, that, you know, it's, it's great to be recognized for those things, but it also doesn't need to be recognized. Mm -hmm. It's the power that you put on, on the people that you're interacting with that's much more impactful than you know having the news station there or a reporter there or whoever talking about it it's yeah. it's really just that you're there you know you, you don't need to be patted on the back for doing something that's good and right and um, the one the definitely one thing that Virginia taught us was that you know we our first or second year I mean, we had a uh, I wouldn't call him a foster kid but we had a kid that Tiki and I we, we watched him grow up you know through you know elementary school um, right. and and we spent all of our spare time with this one kid you know and you know where he is now I who knows if his if our influence was what turned the corner from him but mm -hmm. we, we put the time in, we spent time with this kid and we didn't ask for praise for it. It was just something that we felt like it was good to do. And, and that, that's carried over for me, at least here in Tampa, you know, for, for all, all of my endeavors. I, I don't need somebody to tell me that I'm doing a good job with a kid or a, or a foundation or charity or whatnot. It's just that you're doing it, that you're willing to do it. And I think UVA, it always has. I think it does a great job of putting kids in position, but you know, young adults in position to make themselves available for the influence that they have, that, 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 that they can give other people. And, it, and it's a beautiful thing. And it's, it, to me, I, 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 I love UVA Hospital. We've, we've given money to, to the hospital for, for years, Tika and I. Um, and it's, it's, it's the right thing to do. But it's also a nice thing to do. It feels good to do it. Mm -hmm. It's not because you feel like you have to do it. Hey, what was that kid's name, Rondé? Seamus? Yes, I think it was yes. Seamus. Seamus yeah. Douglas, I think, his name, I think his name was. I feel like I connected with him like <laughs> five or six years ago um, on some social media platform. I haven't heard from him in a couple of years. I should reach out. Sorry, my dog jumped over my lap. We have a new puppy. He's like an adult it. now. He's a hey, Tiki. Yeah. He's an adult now. He's oh, not. He's, he's not a he's kid. <laughs> he's, he's yeah, in but his anybody 30s. anybody younger than me is is a kid. Yeah. Hey, hey Pat. Before before we uh, transition and let you go, is there um, a way that the players visit with the uh, children now, or do they visit them via Zoom now, or you know what Good what's question. the process now? We can't because when we take in a. a an iPad or a, a computer, we mm. have to sterilize it. And there's just this big, um, you know, this, we have to keep things really, really clean and, and sterile. Mm. And so we're just kind of hanging in there waiting for when the players can come back because we don't really have a way. Hmm. It's too complicated. Yeah. So, do they, yeah. Now, do they have TVs in their room already? They do have televisions and in the child life department, which is my department, mm -hmm. we go around every single day and make sure that they have movies and toys mm -hmm. and that we celebrate every single day. And then for holidays, we even go above and beyond. So right That's now we're great. working on Christmas, but, yeah. um, you know, we take little baby footprints and turn them into little pictures for the parents because mm -hmm. sometimes they can't even hold their baby, but this is a way of bonding. Um, yeah. But we just, you know, we're just waiting for this virus to be over with so that we can welcome the players back because it really does influence the children and, and it just excites them and makes them feel like they're, special and in a in a good place i mean but we just don't they do have tvs in their room though yeah. yes 
Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out a you know a, a workaround in which you know mm-hmm. if you just had to sterilize the a camera, uh, a webcam yeah. one time and just kept it in each room. Just you know, just trying to find something because it not only impacts them, it impacts the players. I know we take pride in like Ron oh, said, we, it it fills yeah. us with so much joy, just as much as we fill them with joy, and we you know we just love to just uh, just inspire them because. We we know that life is tough, and we know we're yeah. blessed with so many talents, and we just want to share that with them. So that's why, you know, if there is a way we can make sure that that boy is not a void anymore, you know, because they mm-hmm. can't personally meet there. So uh, we definitely yeah. appreciate your time, Patty. Um, anything you want to say to the Barber Brothers before we transition to our first? Oh, break? thank you so much for all that you've done and all that you continue to do, and and. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Happy holidays to you. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, Patty. Thank you for being our fourth yeah. side fanatic for the yeah. day with the Barber Brothers. They're going to stick around because we have our ACC pick them. Let's go to break. Okay. All righty. Thanks. You'll find we have a way about us. It comes from being unafraid of the hard things, never losing sight of the little things. And when all is said and done, coming together to enjoy the good days. Because every inch, every number, every call, we earn for the salt of the coast, for the stones of the capital, for the hug of Skyline Drive, for all Virginia. the fourth side i'm your host amal hawkins this is episode 11 so i had to bring two ones together i got twins we got ronde <laughs> and tiki here uh this is our acc pick em segment presented by red diamond coffee and tea so fellas i don't know i tell all i guess all our pick em guests you don't got to be aficionado Stephen a smith he mm-hmm. picked on football and he's a basketball guy <laughs> You know, he, he just watched the cowboy game. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he's still mad at Stephen. Uh, he's still mad at uh, what's his name? Uh, that's on Fox Skip. with uh, Skip. Skip. He's still mad at Skip. So he, Skip. He, he, got, he, he, got, he got he got hate for the Cowboys, even though Skip ain't there no more. <laughs> All right. So first up is the game that's happening today at three thirty. We got number two Notre Dame at number nineteen UNC. We're familiar with UNC. Uh oh, that's all right. We we flew it. They had the wrong graphic. Yeah. We gonna we gonna get it right. We yeah, know yeah. the game. Um, so do you feel like Notre Dame a, a kid continue to roll, or will UNC pull out the upset and mess up their playoff chances? I think this is a dangerous game for Nor- for Notre Dame because UNC mm. is sneaky good. Um, they got they got a heck of a, a duo at running back uh, between yes. Carter and Williams and uh, Sam Howell. He did what he though, 38 touchdowns last year. He's got weapons. He got he got brothers down there too. Deami yeah. and, and Chaffrey Brown. I mean, they, yep. they can get after it offensively. Now the problem with Mac Brown's uh, <laughs> squad is that they take some time to get going, right? Sometimes they I, I did the Syracuse game at the beginning of the season, and I'm okay. watching this game. I'm like, Syracuse is terrible. Why is this a game right now? <laughs> and then eventually it ended up opening up and North Carolina took care of business. And they obviously they had that bad loss to Florida State, but North Carolina is dangerous for Notre Dame right this, this right now. Notre Dame was up for Clemson. Um, I hope they don't take this this Tar Heels team lightly. What you got, Ryan Day? Say that Carolina is notoriously slow starting football games, and mm-hmm. that is it's a recipe. It's a it's a recipe mm-hmm. for always chasing the football game. Now, That's right. can Carolina win? Absolutely. Are they a better team? Probably not. But I think, look, Virginia, we, we, we all watch the Virginia game, the Carolina-Virginia yep. game. And if, I mean, we're all homers, but I was a little bit shocked <laughs> that Virginia beat them, right? But Carolina gave them a chance. If Carolina can get up, gets off to a fast start, I, I, I 100% believe they can beat Notre Dame on, on Sunday. And for the landscape of the college football, no, that's today. I think. That's today, Rondé. I know. That's today. I know. Yeah. That's what I mean. I, I'm talking about this game. For the landscape yeah, yeah. of college football, if Carolina beats Notre Dame, it, it, it throws a perfect wrench into the already completely wacky 2020 
year, yeah. and I, I would yeah, love. Yeah, but this it, is so. such a this is such an odd year though, because Notre Dame. I mean, they're they're they can win the ACC. <laughs> they're not even an ACC yeah. member. But they but they're here this year. <laughs> they go take their championship so and weird, run, man. <laughs> take it and run. Peace, see y'all. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. I'll see y'all on the other side. <laughs> so both of y'all have Notre Dame. Po- no, my point is. I want North Carolina. I'm actually going to pick. I'm if, actually going to pick the upset. I think. I think North Carolina yeah, upsets. Them. I think if Carolina do. doesn't get off to a slow start, if they start fast in this football game, Notre Dame uh-huh. can't chase them. I just. I just mm-hmm. feel like they can't. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, we stand. So we're going to be some homers. We're going to pick UNC to win. That's what we That's going. Right. They said Notre trust Dame the man with the puppy. That's right. <laughs> this is this is my this is CJ. This is my new Saluki. There we go. So next up, we got Pitt got at Pitt. number three, nope. Clemson. 3.30 tomorrow, and they said Trevor Sunshine Lawrence mm. is finally back. Finally back. Will this yeah, be I close? Fit. I fit yeah. bad. It, fit. No, this yeah, is going to be a 40-point blowout. <laughs> yeah, man. Even without, even without Trevor Lawrence, it just the, – the, I mean, you know this, Ahmad, and everybody that watches college football knows this. The talent level is, is, is different. It just mm-hmm. – they don't – Syracuse doesn't have the talent to compete on, on either side of the ball at any position. So even without Trevor Lawrence, and Trevor Lawrence is back, and he's going to be fine, and he's going to be a great pro somewhere. Hopefully not, you know, Cincinnati. <laughs> I don't know, or Jets. <laughs> Sorry. Um, um, I don't they, know. They, they, they're so good. Too. But they're so, they're so good on defense. They, they can rush the passer. They have great athletes in secondary. This is, this is not a game. This is not a game. Yeah, this is – as long as Clemson doesn't make mistakes – and I, and I love this kid, Travis Etienne, but he's been putting a ball on the ground the last couple of games, which has cost him, uh, including in the, against that Notre Dame game, even though that wasn't really his fault. That, I, I give that fumble to the quarterback. Yeah, that, that, was on, that was on defense. You should call it Travis. <laughs> you're, the fumble, you're, you're the fumble whisperer, man. You are the fumble whisperer. Anybody that's struggling, it's, Tiki it's getting a call from man. Tiki. We're going to we get that in the works, it's Tiki, awareness. man. Come on. It's awareness Come the, on, Tiki. It's, it, gotta, Ahmad, it's one thing. It's really one thing. Awareness into contact. I mean, if you want to no, 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 no. like a, like Tiki, a loaf no. of bread. No, Tiki, you're going too far. No, we're going we gonna, to we gonna be like Eric Thomas. You got the hip-hop preacher. You're going to be the fumble <laughs> preacher. We're going to get right. you right. We're not going to tell right. the secrets. So I'm going to have to stop you. I mean, cut you off, but we can't mess Clemson, up your market. Clemson in the route. Clemson there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so next up, we got Louisville at BC. This is UVA's next opponent after Florida State. So, man, Louisville's tricky because they're running kind of, kind of hand their quarterback. Yeah. He can be special, but we all know Boston College, they got the same identity. They want to make it rough and tough and – Yep, and make you bleed. So, who you yeah, guys winning right. up in Chestnut Hill? Uh, I think this is I think this is BC at home. I do. Yeah. Uh, the, the the quarterback uh, Jerkovic, it, he was so good against Clemson. The problem is he just he 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 shut down. They shut down in the second half. It's like all you need mm-hmm. is one score. Get one score, and you're gonna upset Clemson. Yes, yeah, so you know obviously it was you know it was, it, it it was Clemson's game, and they found a way to win it. But BC impressed me with their toughness uh, for the first half of that game and the opportunistic way that they played. Now, Malik mm-hmm. Cunningham is, is fantastic. And if they can get this kid right here, Tutu Atwell, the ball in space, you know, watch out. But they've had trouble doing that. Um, and I think, didn't Javion Hawkins, didn't he opt out for the rest of the season? I think they lost their running back maybe for the rest of the season. So mm. um, that's something to keep an eye on with this Louisville team. Is, you know, yeah, he they're did having opt a out. Subpar season. Yeah, they're having a subpar season. Um, you you I hate to say you're going to lose some of the effort for some of these guys, but that's what it feels like. That's not happening at BC. What you got, Rondé? I have a unique connection to, to Boston College now because Jeff Halfley, the head coach, the new head coach at Boston College, was my last defensive back coach for the Bucks. Is that right? Nice. Yeah, he was my safeties coach my last year with Greg Ciano, and, and I have a great relationship with Jeff. And so I'm, I'm obviously rooting for his success, but look, yeah. I know how gritty this guy is. The, oh, the dude, fact he's great at Ohio State too, right? Yeah. The the fact that he took Clemson, you know, even without Trevor Lawrence to the brink, showed me what the attitude that he is enforcing in his in his football team. Are are they a couple of players short? Absolutely. On both sides of the ball, they are. But the way that he coaches and the in the, 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 the demeanor that he expects from his team. The, mm-hmm. Not only is this going to be a game, I think they take it with the seriousness that it deserves because that's how he was with me. My life, he was a r- rookie NFL coach, 
talking to a 16 year veteran and I was <laughs> left so impressed with, you know, just his control. And I, I do a game like this at home. I think he, I think they take it to Louisville, be honest with you. All right. I got Boston college as well. And last up, last up we got our who's yeah. versus the Seminoles presented by red coffee, red diamond coffee and tea. Again, this is presented by red diamond coffee and tea. The Wahoos on the road down there in Tallahassee. Facing the Seminoles, don't have the same mystique. I don't think we fear the spear going into the ground yeah. anymore. We don't know who's going to play quarterback, who's at receiver. Yeah. I call it a dangerous game just because you don't know what to prepare for. That's right. But what do the Wahoos need to do to win this game? Probably some insight on this. But <laughs> I, I'll tell you this, Ahmad. My very first game as a Wahoo, my redshirt freshman year, was mm -hmm. at Tallahassee, and uh, they we had started at Tallahassee the year before, but we went back to Tallahassee in 1994 mm -hmm. as well. And I remember when I saw Chief Osceola run out in the middle of the field, rear that <laughs> horse up, and yep. drop that spear in the ground. I was like, okay, that's different. <laughs> 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 the mystique that came along with that, and just the uh -huh. intimidation factor was more than I was probably ready for. However, mm -hmm. you know, I had an interception in that game. I intercepted yeah, Danny Cannell. It started, started me on my way. To your point, Ahmad, that, <laughs> that, 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 that fear, that, that oh my God factor is, is gone. You know, Florida yeah. State and, the past yeah. couple of years, and I've been in Florida, and I've just lived in Florida for the last 20, you know, 25 yeah. years, 24 years. You know, they, have, they are not anywhere near the football team that they once were. And personnel wise, the coach is still is still trying to figure it out right now. Don't have yes. a quarterback. Like it's to me, this is a, a game that a team that in Virginia that has won three straight games, you know, pr handedly in two of them, should go down here and handle business, and this shouldn't be a problem. That Florida State mm -hmm. is in such a rebuild mode, and probably in a like a, a, a we don't know rebuild mode right now. We don't have the players rebuild mode. That mm -hmm. this should be a game where we finally get two in a row against Florida State. Yeah, no, and look, they, they had the same issue that we talked about with Louisville because uh, 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 Tamori on Terry, he opted out uh, of the mm -hmm. season. You know, Mike Norvell is just I, – I, I like him as a coach, and I know he had success – I forget where he was previously. Uh, I can't remember where he was before, but he's had success building programs, but he's, he's basically starting over uh, with this team. And it's with the quarterback and every other skill position uh, play, uh, you know, players on this squad – um, they got to figure out how to make the mystique come back. But without the fans, to Rondé's point, it's definitely mm -hmm. not going to be there. And even if they were there, because of the, the record, uh, Florida State is, is on the bottom looking up right now. In Virginia, and I love what Bronco's done. I love that he's, you know, it was really hard to, re to replace uh, his quarterback this year. And Brendan Armstrong took a couple of weeks to get it right. Uh, but it's, start <laughs> it's, starting to feel, it's starting to feel like, you know, like the momentum is heading in the right direction, and what game was I watching? And I was like, "Wait, who's playing quarterback?" It was like three of three of these guys. Oh, you're watching Wake Forest. Yeah, wait, I was like, well, "Number ninety, <laughs> who is that? Like, <laughs> who are these guys playing quarterback?" Uh, but you know what? It it worked. It it changed the mentality in a sense. And since that point, and then they beat North Carolina, and it, it took some guts to go for it, fake punt, you know, on your own forty three yard line or whatever it was. I feel like Bronco has has changed the mentality over the last few years of this UVA mm -hmm. squad. And that mentality is if we have a chance to win a game, we're going to go win a game. And if we're supposed to win a game, we're going to, we're going to win that game. And that's what, that's what this weekend is for me. Definitely, man. I, I definitely appreciate you guys insight. You know, I just think the Wahoos have to do what they do. Um, and why I got you two here. So I don't know if you've been following UVA football closely, like via social media, but the positions you play, are usually the mm -hmm. polarizing positions. We always talk about yeah. the running backs. Let's run the ball more. And then our corners, like people think they've been he's struggling. Got a, he's got a good number, man. He's got so, the right number. Yeah, so speak to the – So I, I knew you would. He had 12 touchdowns last year. So can you speak That's to right. the position groups and how, you know, you see those guys performing this year? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because it's – so Wayne last year, I know he had 20 – whatever it was, 12 touchdowns. And this mm -hmm. year he, he – he's – He's been put in a little bit of a tough spot, but he's such a good teammate. You can see him um, not letting it get to him. 
because you remember back in the day, whether it was my era or the Thomas Jones era, yeah. it, you had one bell cow, man. It was one dude mm-hmm. who was getting 25 to 30 <laughs> touches a game, and, and that was it. And uh, I think the position group in general, not just with UVA, but around all of football, this is in the NFL mm-hmm. as well, it's become by committee. And, you know, except for the Carolina Panthers who give, you know, Christian McCaffrey 100 percent of the plays in a game, you, you get <laughs> yeah. used to it and you and you and you find a way to make the most of your opportunities. Now, I'll be honest, that's hard. I'm on. It's really mm. hard to just step in and perform without mm-hmm. getting a feel and, um, you know, getting a, uh, a cohesive. Uh, synergy with your offensive lineman. I always used to call it a dance. Like we're doing this dance and eventually we'll get it right. Uh, but when yeah. you get five or six, you know, touches in some games, sometimes you get 15, it gets, it gets really tough. So I, I commend the position group for being mm-hmm. successful despite not having a lot of consistency doing it over on, on a week in and week out basis. Nice. Yeah. Football. So well, TV, tell me about the corners. Cause I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't. Oh, you know what you know what i'll do you one better ronda i'll do you one better because a lot of times they always have a question about dbs like turn and look for the football defending the 50 50 ball like what do you think is the most important steps in order to put yourself in the best position to have the percentages on your side because it just seems like they've been struggling to make those type of plays well i'll say this i'll say this and i you know i'm not the biggest i wasn't the fastest guy in nfl if depending how you're playing, if you're playing at the line of scrimmage, you can't defend the 50 50 ball unless you win at the line of scrimmage. And if you get past that point, you know, if you're on top of receiver, you have him somewhat in phase, so to speak, mm-hmm. in phase, so to speak, you know, then you can go and try to find the football. The good ones, it's a feel. It's not mm-hmm. like a, it's not like a technique. It's a I'm running. I'm looking at this receiver and I have to be able to read him. And that's to, to me, that was the hardest thing to do. Now, if you're an off corner and you're playing, you know, you're pedaling and you can open your hips and you can run and you're playing a 50-50 ball down the field, that's all about position. You know, you're either, and, and it really depends on the throw. If you're inside of the guy, you can make a play on the ball. If you're outside of the guy, you got to go through him to make it. And the hardest thing for me as a, as a you know, a deep defender, because, you know, I've, I've played against Calvin Johnson. I've played against Randy Moss. Yes. I've played against these freaking giants of <laughs> NFL wide receivers. And I knew that I always had to be inside that guy. I mm-hmm. wanted him on my back so I could at least have a chance to make a play through him. If I, if I wasn't in that position, you weren't going to make a play. So mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's very calculated about, um, it, at least it was for me, it was very calculated about putting myself in position where I could make a play. You know, because a lot of times you're around the ball and you just don't make the play. You get mossed, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and there's there's very few ways that you can do do it and, and make a play effectively. So it, it's 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 coaching, yes, but it's also just understanding who you're going against. You know, you know, in, in the in the in the the, the Chuck it league, you know, because uh, the NFL turned into that for a while. College football is definitely that way, uh, where they just throw it and hope. Uh, and you know, my guy's better than your, you know, my guy's better than your guy. Uh, offense, you know. The, the defensive back is completely at a disadvantage, but you can put yourself in a position where, where you're going to make the play. You just have mm-hmm. to know that it's coming. And I, I'd much rather have played that way than, um, you know, always having to plant and drive and make plays on digs and curls. And that, I mean, that's like, holy cow, that's craziness. You know, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tough process. But there, there is a specific way that you can play the ball down the field. They just got to figure out how to do it. Um, yeah. And it might be a little late in the season for them to finally get it, um, mm-hmm. but it, it's it's really just studying your craft, studying yourself, understanding how to put yourself in the position. So, um, you know, thankfully Florida State doesn't have a quarterback this week to, to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're right about that. So I want to thank both Rondé and Tiki Barber. I keep saying Rondé's name first because he's seven good. minutes older, and I got to make sure. Good. You know, Tiki make it catch me because he's. Are you faster than Rondé, Tiki? Were you faster than Always. Rondé? Always, I was stronger. Okay, see, I was faster. I, I like to keep the feud alive. <laughs> all, all the, all the, all the superlatives. That was there. More just famous, not older. That that's it. Uh, Five years old. That conversation <laughs> is out the window. <laughs> well, I definitely appreciate both of you guys joining us, man. Wahoo Nation. They definitely got 
so much love for both of you. Um, you guys you are guys. polarizing figures, man. Icons. I got the Barbara, Barbara. twins to join the force side. I've made it, man. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> Always, I'm uh, Be good. Stay blessed. Oh, Thank you, guys. You, yeah. All right, on that note, let's go to our last break. My guys, the Barbara twins. To the fourth side, I'm your host, Amar Hawkins. As we wind down on this 11th episode, thank you to Tiki and Rondé Barber for joining us. And also, Patty, our fourth side fanatic. Right now, we got to go to the keys of the game. They're going to bring up that big old truck that I still ain't got in my driveway. But, hey, man, good things come to those who wait. So the keys to the game versus Florida State. Keep contain, Contain havoc. Jordan Travis looks to return from injury in the Seminoles leading rusher from the QB position. Six TDs on the ground, almost 70 yards per game. Florida State is their last in ACC and sacks allowed. So that means we got to get after Mr. Jordan Travis. Down on the corner. Beware of the corner. We're talking about Asante Samuel Jr. Asante Samuel Jr. I am old because his daddy played in the NFL for the Patriots. And I think he also played for the Eagles. I could be lying. But I know he played for the Patriots. All he did was intercept, and he just like his daddy. Um, he is tied for the league league in interceptions with three. He's incredibly athletic. He's second in pass defense, pass breakups. So, Brennan, hey, Brennan, stay away from Asante Samuel. If you do throw to him, make sure it's nice and catchable to the air up there, Lavelle Davis Jr. I wouldn't mind seeing him Malsum. Um, FSU's defense as a whole is weaker than in the past years. They're 13 in the past and rest defense, but they still have those athletes. So there, look at them, just like his daddy. Look at that. His daddy would have caught that one though. Hey, matter of fact, just stay with the uh, three interceptions, Sam. You can have a couple pass breakups, just no interceptions. Just do that, and then we can come back and throw it over top of you. Um, and the last thing is block out distractions. You're going to Florida, man. You're going to Florida. They, they look different. It's different. OK, it's wide open. Lots of people, you know, they're going to do the little chant. Oh, 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 don't let them do the chant. That's that's the main thing. Don't let them do the chant. OK, that's Petty Hawk said he wanted to talk. So he said, don't let them do the chant. All right. And when the chief come out, close your eyes and get in the huddle and talk to each other. OK, so when you see the horse come out, unlike when our horse come out, we get excited. When their horse, we're going to huddle up. We're going to talk to each other. Ignore what they doing. So. That's it for this 11th episode of The Fourth Side. I'm your host, Amal Hawkins. Again, thanks to Patty. Thanks to the Barber Twins for coming on. Hopefully, you're enjoying the rest of your holidays. Thanksgiving, man. Be thankful for your family. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for you guys, The Fourth Side. I'm always thankful for anything I can do when it comes to UVA sports, man. As you know, man, I'm a, just a UVA ambassador. Until next time, The Fourth Side, we out. Enjoy the rest of your Black Friday. <laughs>